the James Webb Space Telescope is a lot of a piece of that investigation. Betelgeuse, a star that has dazzled researchers for a long time, is known for its huge size and has been the focal point of broad logical research arranged in our system. It outperforms our own sun in extent, bringing up issues about its arrangement, what's more, inevitable downfall. As of late, the bizarre conduct displayed by Betelgeuse has caused much more prominent worry among researchers. The star has been showing sporadic examples of diminishing and lighting up, driving a few specialists to conjecture on its approaching annihilation. Popular physicist Michio Kaku has anticipated that Betelgeuse will soon go through a cosmic explosion event. This galactic peculiarity involves the star's touchy end, coming about in the arrival of a massive measure of energy. Normally, such forecasts raise a significant inquiry. What suggestions does Betelgeuse's blast hold for us here on Earth? Might this disastrous occasion at some point spell calamity for our planet? Let us dig into the disturbing subtleties encompassing Betelgeuse's expected obliteration, as predicted by Michio Kaku, and consider how this galactic development may influence our world as well as our day-to-day -day existences. On Earth, every day, incalculable stars, counting our sun, produce enormous intensity and light through strong atomic responses. Among these stars is Betelgeuse, which is approaching an incredible finish and is supposed to release one of the most motivating blasts of all time seen in the universe. So, what exactly is Betelgeuse? While discussing strong stars, one can't disregard Betelgeuse. It is a red supergiant star of such huge size that it is one of the largest stars apparent to the naked eye. Betelgeuse is otherwise known as Alpha Orionis in the Bayer designation system, which appoints the Alpha title to the most splendid star in a group of stars. However, in reality, Betelgeuse is the second most brilliant star in the Orion star grouping, with Riel being the most brilliant. By the way, due to its variable splendor, Betelgeuse sometimes outshines Riel. This probably led Johann Bayer to assign Betelgeuse as Alpha Orionis and Riel as Beta Orionis when he published the Uranometria in 1603. Betelgeuse is a variable star, meaning its apparent brilliance changes from 0 to plus 1.6. Consequently, it is the second most brilliant star in Orion and the tenth most brilliant star in the night sky. Strangely, despite being only 10 million years old, Betelgeuse is relatively young compared to other stars. For example, our Sun is approximately 5 billion years old. Nonetheless, Betelgeuse is an advanced star. Despite its youth, it consumes fuel at a faster rate than the Sun because larger stars require more fuel to sustain themselves. While Betelgeuse might be young, it makes up for its age with its titanic size. This huge star is about 1,000 times bigger than our Sun. To put it into perspective, if we were to replace the Sun with Betelgeuse, it would stretch out past the asteroid belt and even past Jupiter. Thus, it would immerse all of the inner planets of our planetary system, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. In spite of its huge size, Betelgeuse is only 16.5 times more massive than the Sun. Betelgeuse has 126,000 solar iridescences, making it visible 548 light years away. Strangely, Betelgeuse is cooler than the Sun, with a surface temperature of 3,600 Kelvin. The name Betelgeuse has a captivating story behind it. Many stars have interesting names derived from interpretations of foreign names, and sometimes there are mistranslations involved. That is what happened with Betelgeuse. In Arabic, the star grouping of Orion was called Jaza from which Betelgeuse was referred to as Yad al-Jazer, which means the hand of the butcher. However, during the 13th century, there was a mistake in the Arabic name, and Yad became stable. This mistake stuck, and that is how the European name Betelgeuse originated. Betelgeuse is easy to spot in the night sky. In fact, it can be used as a reference point to find other stars. The Orion constellation is one of the easiest to detect, and many people use it to navigate the night sky. By drawing a line through the three stars of Orion's belt and extending it upwards, you can find Aldebaran, 
the most brilliant star in the Taurus constellation. From there, you can proceed to the Pleiades. Similarly, you can follow Betelgeuse as a guide to track down other stars by connecting Riel and Betelgeuse, then extending the line past the red supergiant to reach Castor and Pollux, the two most brilliant stars in the Gemini constellation. Another reason Betelgeuse stands out is its distinct radiant red color. Being a red supergiant star, it's easily visible. However, the best time to observe Betelgeuse depends on your location on Earth. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, the cold weather months from January to April are ideal. During this period, the star rises as the sun is setting beneath the horizon. While Betelgeuse is intriguing because of many factors, its inevitable destiny has been drawing a lot of attention. Supernovae are among the most awe-inspiring events in the night sky. Stars, despite living for billions of years, eventually reach a conclusion, and their downfall is far from calm. When a star reaches the end of its life, it detonates in a magnificent eruption of light, creating a supernova. Supernovae can outshine whole galaxies for a brief period and release more energy than our sun will emit in its entire lifetime. NASA states that supernovae are the most significant explosions that happen in space. Even early astronomers, without the advanced equipment we have today, were aware of supernovae. The oldest recorded observation of a supernova is RCW-186, seen by Chinese astronomers in 185 AD. They noted that the star stayed visible in the sky for several months. Notwithstanding RCW-186, Chinese and Korean astronomers also observed the explosion of the Crab Nebula in 1054 AD. Historical evidence suggests the event may have been visible to Native Americans in the U.S. as well. The supernova was so bright that people could see it during daylight hours. The frequency of supernovae depends on your viewpoint. According to the European Space Organization, a supernova occurs once every 50 years in a galaxy the size of the Milky Way. This is roughly equivalent to one supernova happening every 50 years in the entire universe. However, most of these events are too far away for us to see. There are two main types of supernovae, type 1 and type 2. Type 1 supernovae happen when white dwarf stars reach the end of their lives, and this is more common in star systems where two stars are very close to each other. As the gas from the companion star accumulates on the white dwarf, it gets crushed and sets off a strong atomic reaction, leading to a massive explosion known as a supernova. Astronomers use type 1 supernovae, also known as standard candles, to measure distances in space since they are believed to shine with the same level of brightness at their peak. On the other hand, type 2 supernovae are more interesting. For a star to become a type 2 supernova, it must meet specific conditions. First, it should be several times more massive than our sun. These stars eventually run out of hydrogen and then helium fuel in their core. However, they are still massive enough to continue fusing carbon and progressively gather heavier elements in the core, forming layers like the layers of an onion. The elements become lighter as we move towards the outer part of the star. There's a particular mass level, known as the Chandrasekhar limit, that sets off an explosion. That's why these type II supernovae are also called core collapse supernovae. When the explosion occurs, it sends a shock wave that pushes the star's material into space, creating the supernova. What remains is an incredibly dense object called a neutron star, which is as small as a city but contains the mass of the sun. Type II supernovae are further classified based on their light patterns, which describe how the intensity of the light changes over time. For example, the light from type II L supernovae consistently decreases after the explosion, while the light from type 2p supernovae remains steady for a long period before fading. On the other hand, as stars become even larger, they may not undergo a supernova but instead collapse to form black holes. This happens when a star is larger than approximately 20 to 30 times the mass of our sun. What does a supernova actually look like? Investigations have revealed that, before the explosive blast, a supernova acts like a giant vibrating speaker and emits a sound that can be heard. 
The first time researchers saw a supernova in action was in 2008. Astronomers noticed a strange eruption of X-rays that was very bright and lasted for five minutes. However, further research showed that this supernova was very unusual. This dramatic fate awaits Betelgeuse. Everything began when researchers noticed that Betelgeuse had been continuously becoming dimmer for over a hundred years. Observations have shown that Betelgeuse, as a red supergiant star in its late stage, has brightened and dimmed repeatedly. The star expanded to a colossal size, and bubbles of material rose from inside the star to its surface and then sank down, adjusting the distribution of cooler and hotter regions on the star's surface. These changes cause Betelgeuse to appear brighter or fainter over time. A group of astronomers, including an amateur astronomer, spent 25 years monitoring Betelgeuse's brilliance using a telescope with a 10-inch diameter. They once again saw that Betelgeuse was growing fainter. After a few months, they noticed that Betelgeuse had become fainter compared to the last 25 years. They posted a message on a website called the Stargazer Wire to inform other astronomers about this. Over time, Betelgeuse continued to get even fainter, reaching its lowest brightness in a century. This was very surprising since, normally, Betelgeuse is one of the brightest stars visible in the evening sky, ranking among the top six or seven. However, it had dropped significantly and now ranked as the 21st brightest star. This surprising change caught the attention of established researchers, prompting them to seriously consider the possibility of Betelgeuse going supernova due to its mass. Astronomers anticipate that the red supergiant star will go supernova when it reaches around 10 million years of age. At present, Betelgeuse is estimated to be around that age. During this time, researchers didn't fully understand what was happening with Betelgeuse, although they suspected that something was amiss. What they were certain of, however, was that the star was extremely old and nearing the end of its life. Thanks to the Hubble Space Telescope, specialists were finally able to gather clear data about Betelgeuse's condition. They made a significant discovery, a massive crest extending over a million miles, 1.6 million kilometers, may have erupted from the star's interior. This event could be compared to a starquake, where an enormous shock wave caused a sizable portion of the star's surface to be blown away. The ejected mass was a staggering 400 million times larger than the typical coronal mass ejections, CMEs, seen on the Sun. A CME refers to a huge cloud of electrically charged particles originating from the Sun's outer atmosphere or corona. When these hot plasma masses, heated to extreme temperatures and pushed by a powerful explosion of energy from a solar flare, encounter planets in their path, they can produce damaging effects. However, CMEs don't directly pose a threat to life on Earth. Nonetheless, they can disrupt the technologies we rely on, like power grids and GPS accuracy. When CMEs reach Earth, they can trigger geomagnetic storms that generate ground-induced currents capable of damaging our power grid. They can also interfere with GPS accuracy, which is crucial for various daily services. Solar flares and CMEs share a similar origin. They occur when a large portion of the sun's magnetic field, pushing through its visible surface or photosphere, becomes compressed near its base and suddenly reconnects at a lower level. This process releases a tremendous amount of excess energy as high-energy electromagnetic radiation. As a result, the gases around the reconnection site become intensely heated, reaching temperatures of around 36 million degrees Fahrenheit, 20 million degrees Celsius. At such extreme temperatures, the particles close to the site, those trapped in the isolated loop of the magnetic field above it, gain significant speed and energy. This results in the formation of an enormous bubble of hot gas that escapes the sun's gravitational pull and races through space. CMEs can travel at incredible speeds of hundreds of miles per second, allowing them to reach Earth in less than a day. Considering all the information about CMEs, it becomes clear why researchers were baffled by the observations of Betelgeuse. The star displayed strange behavior, as though its interior was experiencing some sort of oscillation due to a lack of certain materials.